Good morning, friends. Welcome back to the House of Tone. My name is Wes Lee. I started a YouTube channel to show what my life is like as a band instrument repair technician. I appreciate you stopping by. Well, I hadn't seen you all in a month of Sundays, it seems, but it really was just last week. We've been jamming hard here, so I didn't get much content up last week. I threw up some shorts, but I'm glad to be able to speak with you again today before we get going full blown. It's an early morning, but I got a project in that is super cool, and I wanted to share it with you. So let's get on it. Come on. So check this out. This is an original Busher True Tone, all original. Look at that. More of a copper than a straight gold bell. That's really cool. It's in such great condition. Now, we do have a lot of key play that's going to have to be dealt with up here. So we'll be doing a lot of key swedging and key refitting. The body is just in amazing condition. Key work to do down here. These don't seal the way I want. And check this out. It has the old studs. So we're going to go with period correct pads. So you pop this. This is almost like a flute style. See, it's got this grommet. And it holds the pad in. And you see, this is, this is just a cardboard back. What this would have had in it would have been, it would have had a metal backing to it. Let me grab another pad. And this is one I've dissected before. So it's your leather cover, your cotton, and then just a cardboard. And see that cardboard can bend. With this metal, the metal is much more firm. This means that your key work on the instrument has to be set up better for this pad to work. Now what we're going to do is measure the diameter. So we're going to use the pad cup as a reference. We know that these are sold in millimeters, so we'll set that up about 39 millimeters. You can see that it's got some distortion on it. It's not round, so we're going to have to round this back out. On a vintage horn like this, it's always better to measure the pads that you need and then order over and under to make sure you get the pad that you need. Don't just order a blank set. Continuing with the assessment, neck looks good not damaged in any way really until you look here and let's zoom in on this it looks like the neck someone is some kind of a tooling inside and put ridges and it's not round and you can see those you can see those ridges and what happens is that when the neck is on the horn, it rocks. What that rocking means, this is a leak. So we're going to refit this tenon, and that's going to be what we're doing today. I'm going to show you a couple of real cool tools for this, but it's serious business. To repair this neck, we're going to use a series of three tools. We're going to use some barrel-shaped dent balls. This tool, this is the shrinker. This is a stretcher. So let's jump right into this and see what's going on. If I take this dent ball, let's zoom this in. You can see how it's gapped in places. So it should, makes those areas that I talked about stand out more. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use this dent ball to help round this tenon. After we do that, we're going to use this. Now, questions that come up in the comments a lot is, do I worry about stretching, thinning, hardening material? And I always say no, because I use a rawhide mallet and I don't bang directly metal to metal and squash brass between steel. This tool right here expands and hardens metal. So we're going to talk about some things with that. Finally, we're going to refit the neck using these collets. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to find the barrel shaped dent ball that fits to about the center line. And then just as I was tapping a mouthpiece to re-round it, I want to tap with my rawhide. Now 
The goal here is to make this as round as I can get it. So if you worked in band shops for a long time, or you work for an old timer, you might notice this style, this can opener style of stretcher, but it was shorter and it was red, and that was the Thompson unit. And that was, this is an update of that. And so what we've got going on, this Allen key drives this bearing and it's on a spring. And the crank turns this lower roller as you move your saxophone neck. This also works for bass clarinets, uh, tenors, alto saxes, berry saxes, piccolo. This can be adapted. There are other parts for this that can be interchanged and you can use soprano sax and piccolo as well. This machine squeezes. That's what it does. So this is going to expand. The key here, when you slide in, you just make contact and then you give a little bit more. Like make contact and a quarter of a turn max. And you want to angle your work and you're rolling this out. And I can feel those ridges as I'm working. And I want to keep the angle of this. And you just proceed doing this. You do not want to try to do this all at one time. You want to go slow. You want to feel it. You want to actually be able to move the neck. See, I'm not that tight. I'm just pushing it around. And I can hit specific areas. The key, like I say, go slow. This is a little bit time consuming work, but the quality results are what pays off. Can you see the brightness of the striations where we're pushing it back together? Do those show up? Mm -hmm. So let's put this back in. You notice how I angle that, angle that neck to draw across. You can feel the ridges and then when it goes smooth, you'll feel it push back down and go smooth. See this area for on here drops out. Oh yeah, I think you can almost visibly see that one. And the answer is yes, I do know that I'm expanding this. I'm actually, that's what I'm trying to do. But I've got to get this round. You have to repair someone else's damage. I just really want to hold on to it right there. I'm going to back off so I can slide it myself. Here we go. Still in that area. That's the area. That's... Now, what I like to do when I'm at the edge of the neck here, I back it off a little bit more because just like when you're shrinking and expanding a flute tenon, if you come to the end of that, you'll flare it. And that's not what we want to do. You can see the striations of where we laid it back down and rounded it out. This feels smooth now. So the key to this tool is once you make contact, very light, 
you know, we were here, and like I said, if we're at a clock face, if you're, you know, if you say this is six twelve, then you, I was going like one or seven, depending on your reference. So from here to here, at a time, that's it. Now, let's go check the fit on the horn. So we're nice and tight from the start. We bind up a little bit and we get tight here. And the tight is fine, but it's a little bit too tight for my taste. But I can feel that this is round down here. This feels oh so good. So let's go take care of this. Now the last tool in this operation, and we over tightened it. Now we're gonna find the collet that is the correct size for what we need. They're all numbered one through six. If you notice, there's a machined cutout on the side. It aligns the collet with the gap. There's a thumb screw. All that thumb screw does is keep it oriented in the right direction. That's all it does. You don't want to tighten this down dead tight. On these thick collets, it's not an issue. But on, let's say, number six, if you crank that thumb screw, you've already collapsed this, and this is not round. This is oval. So all this does is just keep it located. That's all it does. On the other side, we have this, this cap head screw. This cap head screw goes through the bore to this wall here, and it prevents all of this from squeezing closed. So this acts as a control. Now, when I, I'll talk more about this when we set the tool up for use. Finally, we have our handle, and this is the business end, and this gives you your leverage. Okay, let's get it set up in the vise. We've got this set up in our vise. We've got the collet that is the size that we want. We're gonna use the locator mark over on the side. We just tighten it enough so that it locates. This cap head screw, like I was talking about, if you drive this into the wall, you prevent the back side of the tool from squeezing. You would only be squeezing from the front side. This should be used as a stop. Here you can see how the Allen screw, I've got it backed off the wall just a little bit. We're gonna put some grease on this. I use Lanolin, it's what I use for my tuning slides, so. This is what I like to use. And we're going to slide it into our collet. And notice that it's loose. Notice that the collet is not turning. I'm going to bring the handle to the collet. I have to adjust off my Allen screw. I'm going to let this find, let the collet find the neck. You see how I'm checking that. Okay. Once I've got this where I have, I can feel the pressure on it. To shrink, it's just like using a, any other swedging tool. You take it a quarter of a turn, turn. Quarter of a turn, back off, turn. Quarter of a turn, back off, turn. Quarter of a turn, back off, turn. Do this all the way around the neck tenon you're not taking big swipes at it you're just using the leverage to your advantage go around one time take it out and check I've got it nice and tight It's still a little bit, it's a little bit too tight. I'm going to do the operation again. 
So I'm going to load it back in, give a little bit of a squeeze, and back off. And the reason that you don't want to leave it in one spot and crank down on it, you'll actually put the shape of that collet into the tenon of the neck. That's not a good thing. You will actually make your material hump up. So you want to exercise caution. Let's check it. Drops in nice and smooth. Oh. The neck just glides in like butter. And the screw is not tight. And notice that we have no rock on the joint now. The neck tenon to the neck socket relationship is exactly what it needs to be. Well, all right. Man, this, this saxophone is going to be an amazing project. It's going to be a little bit of a long term. I've got to go ahead and get it stripped down and then get my pads ordered. And we'll pick back up on some other things as those come in. And I'll do some key refitting videos on this. It's just, it's going to be a beautiful project. For all you technicians out there, these are cool tools to have. They are extremely effective. And the big takeaway, don't clamp anything down real tight. Go slow. Check your work often. You'll be golden. I'll put the part numbers down in the description and a link to Faree's Tools so that you can give them a call and talk to them about getting yourself some of these. I appreciate you coming around today. It's about time for me to open the shop. This is Wesley, signing out.